podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for joining me here today for this uh, webinar on the Entitlement Registry. I'm just uh, seeing if I can set things up correctly, because I think last time in the, in the webinar earlier this afternoon, uh, the setup wasn't quite right for people to be able to unmute themselves. So I'll just see if I can do that now. There we go. So if you have any questions, you should just be able to come off mute and, and ask them. Uh, we also have uh, the questions text box uh, in your interface in case you have a question and you don't want to you don't want to speak to me. You can you can write to me instead. So that'd be that'd be fine. Um, let's see. I think that should be everything set up now. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to move things out the way. <laughs> the GoToMeeting interface does get a bit in the way. There we go. Okay, uh, so as I said, we're at the Entitlement Registry webinar. Uh, my name's Emily Goodwin. Uh, I'm from Edina. Uh, and just to give a bit of a background about Edina, uh, Edina are specialists in developing and delivering projects including large-scale online services, mobile apps, and digital tools. We're based at the University of Edinburgh, uh, part of Information Services, uh, and we have significant expertise in library support and geospatial technology and services, and also things like project management, software development, and innovative research and development. Um, we are based in Edinburgh, but our work is national and international, and we work with partners across the world. So uh, as a bit of a background for the Entitlement Registry, uh, it's being developed by Elsa Dedina, but in partnership with the LOCKS program at Stanford University. So what is an Entitlement Registry? Uh, well, it kind of depends on who you are. If you're a library, uh, it helps uh, provide you with infrastructure and seamless access to post-cancellation data based on actionable entitlement data that, that you provide. If you're an academic, um, it helps to guarantee continuous access to journal articles, even if your library's cancelled the subscription, because you still have a record of what it is you should be entitled to. And if you're a publisher, it helps to fulfil your PCA commitment to libraries based on authorisation data that both parties have verified. So the role of entitlement information. Essentially, it's evidence that an institution has perpetual access to material. And this is entitlement information that's used during renewals and, and cancellations. And it answers the question, what will we retain access to if we cancel subscriptions? Which is particularly important as libraries get a broad current access under big deals. And if the model changes and the big, the, the big deal, you know, little bits drop in and out of it all the time, libraries need to know what they purchase and they need to know what they have entitlement to. Now, there are challenges uh, to entitlement information at the moment, uh, largely the variable quality of records. This is both for libraries and for publishers, uh, especially as you go further back in time towards the year 2000. Uh, another big factor is that there's often no common location to record this information. It could be in spreadsheets, it could be in emails, or it could be just in the heads of key staff members who have moved on. Uh, and you, know, you lose that key piece of information that helps keep your institution running. So why an entitlement registry? Well, we've been working on this for a couple of years, but we ran an international survey in July of last year, which confirmed strong library demand for an entitlement registry. Um, over 85% of respondents reported current entitlement process, that the, the current entitlement process is difficult or very difficult. Nearly 90% indicated very strong support for a tool that delivers centralized access to entitlement information for publishers. And over 65% had strong support for a single place to upload and keep entitlement records. And, you know, we've had this, we've had, we've been running um, pilot sessions with uh, a small number of UK based libraries. And the feedback we've been receiving tells us that this, this tool is something that's really going to help the sector, you know, from having an entitlement registry to register what's owned in perpetuity, uh, to help alleviating pressure on teams during busy periods, such as the coincidence of subscription renewals in the first teaching block, 
or just having an efficient way to check perpetual entitlements. Now, we've spoken to publishers as well. Um, sales reps have told us that they regularly hear library concerns about this and that they struggle themselves during journal transfer. It's difficult to get accurate entitlement information during these transfers and responsibility for providing access to pre-transfer content can vary. So in terms of the strategy, where we're heading with this, um, we're using entitlement data as a foundation for strategic initiatives. At the institution level, we're hoping to improve the renewal cycle and make it more efficient. At consortia or national level, we're helping to provide analytics to support interlibrary loan, print rationalization, and shared subscription management. Um, in terms of where we're going next, uh, we will be running a beta in May to understand running costs, access to data and scalability of data ingest workflows, and most importantly, we're looking to understand priority features that libraries will need at service launch. So if you're interested after, because uh, I'm going to show you the entitlement registry today as well, if you're, if after seeing that you're interested in uh, signing up for our beta, just let us know at uh, edina at ed.ac.uk. We'd be more than happy to have you on board. Uh, in terms of service launch itself, we're aiming uh, to launch in summer this year. Uh, we've received interest from a wide variety of countries and we're just so excited to have more and more people on board with this project. Uh, if you'd like to see a demo version, uh, this demo version at the link here is slightly different to the one that I'm going to be showing you today. The one I sh I'm showing you today has more data in it, but the demo version is still really handy if you just want to have a play around yourself and, and see how it works. Uh, the short link's on your screen just now. Just pause for a moment <laughs> so you can take a note of it. Uh, and then, well, without further ado, we can move on to looking at the system itself, unless anyone has any questions at the moment. Okay, so I'll move on here now. Move it to the windows out the way. Okay, so this is the entitlement registry. Uh, this is the home screen. Uh, up in the top right, you would um, you would have a login button here, but I've already logged in to, to speed up the process. Um, then down at the bottom, uh, we have our support email address in case of any feedback or queries. You, we, we would love to hear from you. Um, and then moving on to the entitlement registry itself, uh, I'm going to go to the titles tab first of all. So this is essentially a big list of all of the uh, all of the journals that in, in this fictitious instance that the University of Edinburgh is entitled to. Um, it's the University of Edinburgh because as part of Edina, uh, we're at the University of Edinburgh, so it just it made most sense for my, my profile to be the University of Edinburgh. Uh, so like I said, you've got this list. Um, this list is filterable. You can filter uh, either alphabetically or reverse alphabetically here. Um, you can or you can do it by type. Basically any any of these uh, any of these uh, headings are filterable there. You've also got filters on the side. Um, so if you wanted to see certain flags, you would just pick the flag you wanted to see. And on the topic of flags, a uh, handy little segue there, uh, the flags on the side, they indicate where there might be an issue or a discrepancy or just something that you might want to be aware of in your journal entitlement. Uh, so for example, this top one here, non-matching entitlements. So basically what we're saying is the institution and the publisher are both provided information, but they don't quite match up. Uh, you've got other ones in the key at the top here or a single source where it's only come from one party, a gap in entitlements, which may be deliberate, but it may be that there's information missing non-matching we've gone through and multiple publishers where there's been a journal transfer. Um, so if I just pop into this first one here, Zygot, um, you can see here we've got a little summary of the bibliographic details, uh, including uh, reoccurrence of the flag in play here. Uh, coming down, you can see that there's quite a big disparity between what the institution says they're entitled to and what the publisher says they have entitlement to. Um, being that the institution says they have access from 2009, but the publisher says 
uh, that access is actually from 1997. So coming down to this timeline here, this is a much more visual representation. It makes it a lot easier to understand. Um, so you can see that entitlement starts way back here in 97 and goes to 2016. Um, but what the institution, what Edinburgh University is saying is that they, they only have uh, access from here, but it continues on further to 2017. And that's down here where what the flags are really reinforcing. So you can see we actually have two instances of non-matching entitlements. And in the description, it, uh, it makes it clear exactly where the issues lie. Um, also, we have a comment section at the top here. This isn't quite finished yet. After all, we are pre-beta. Um, but uh, given time, this will contain basically a, a workflow tool for um, colleagues at the same institution to be able to work on entitlements together uh, and see each other's comments. Uh, so it makes it a bit more efficient to work as a team. Uh, so back at titles, as I said, you can filter, uh, you can filter your information by any, any of the filters on here. So if we only want to see ones with a gap in entitlement, that's what we filtered to just now. Um, but what you can also do is pop out to the Publishers tab, which has a note of all of the publishers uh, that are currently, uh, that, that you currently have uploaded entitlement to. Um, so some of them have icons, other ones don't. Uh, that, we've left it that way just so you can see that even if we haven't uploaded an icon uh, for that publisher at this point, it's still, you know, it's nice and clear and easy to read. You can tell exactly which publisher it's for. Um, so this splits out between library data, where it shows your earliest and most recent entitlements, and also shows you the publisher data. So uh, this is also handy because if you click on it, so this is for the American Chemical Society, this has now filtered all of your titles down to those published by the American Chemical Society. Um, we also have, uh, hang on, where do we go next? Let's, let's upload a spreadsheet. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, you can export any of the views on here uh, in a number of formats at the bottom here. So if I was to pick CSV and I only want to see American Chemical Society, I can just open that with Microsoft Excel. And there it goes. That's it open now. Uh, just open up some of the tabs a bit. So it's it basically has downloaded exactly what's on this screen. But it means you can work with it at a, at a kind of local level uh, as well as having it stored up on, on this website. Uh, so if we want to upload new entitlements, uh, you come across here. You only have the choice of your organization from this drop down. And then we can go to browse. Uh, and I have two webinar files here. The webinar one file is what I put up earlier. So I'm going to put up webinar two file just now. And we upload that. And the new entitlements have uploaded successfully. Let's see, we have a question in the question box just now. Is there a required login to link given for the registry example. Um, right, so if you if you mean the short link that was at the end of the, uh, the presentation, if you go to that short link, it takes you to a holding page and um, which has information for for logins to that demo site uh, just there on the page. And uh, the password is the same as the username. So I think you've got a few to choose from. I think the one that the one listed as Edinburgh has the most information in it. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. So uh, I'm just going to open up the webinar two file so you can see what I just uploaded before we go and look at it in the file list itself. So I've uploaded three different journals. I've also made sure that one of the journals has a gap in entitlement. So you can see there I've got from 2007 to 2015 and then 2017 to 2020. So that should be reflected in, right, so I've called that one speciality webinars because earlier all I had to do was search for webinars because the, the, only the three I'd just put up came in, but now, now we're going to have six of them. Yeah, there's all six of them. Some of them just said webinar. Okay, so if it's, uh, was it still? Oh, Craig, you've forgotten already. 
Yeah, well, speciality webinars. Okay, so speciality webinars, you can see this says Edinburgh University Press. It now says 2007 to 2020 because that's the full range of dates that we gave it earlier. Uh, we can see here on the flags, we've got a gap in entitlements, which is quite purposeful. And we also have only a single source because I've uploaded it as the institution. And uh, so here we have, you can see two lots of entitlements given in this list. And down in the nice graphic representation, we have a big chunk of entitlement followed by the gap, followed by more entitlement. And then the flags at the bottom just confirm what, what the flag icons were saying. Uh, in addition to this, you can upload evidence. So for example, if you have a PDF uh, that just confirms uh, it might be from a publisher saying, yep, we confirm you have access to X journal for X number of years, and you want to just store that somewhere um, so that you have access to it later. Or, for example, if you have a lot of paper copies and you're worried about uh, keeping them safe, you could scan them in and upload them here. So if I say the description is uh, test PDF 2, because I did one earlier, I can go in here and upload it. And this takes me directly to the documents page. Uh, so you can see here that's webinar two PDF was the file name. Over here we can see it says test PDF two. Uh, I can open it up. It's quite boring. I just <laughs> it's a little placeholder PDF, so there's no information in it. Uh, there you go. Test PDF two was the name of the PDF. Um, this document store also stores all of the spreadsheets that you upload. Uh, as entitlements, so you can review them at any point. And um, so it just kind of does a bit of version control for you. Yeah, uh, for example, by confirming the date uh, that it was uploaded and any descriptions or notes in the site. And that uh, largely is the entitlement registry in a nutshell. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? What are the options shown to the right of the graphical timeline? Uh, let's see if we go into this one. I think this is so, yeah, so you can you can set it statically. So this one was pan, for instance, so it's set quite statically. But if you if you turn it on, you can scroll it from side to side. Um, and then I think the other ones, yeah, we'll zoom. So I could zoom right in if I wanted to and, and then still move it from side to side uh, and reset. Yeah, it takes it back to where you were before. Uh, is there a storage limit at, at the moment? No, uh, we haven't we haven't got that far yet. Um, basically, we'd be looking to work with the libraries to understand, uh, oh, and the publishers as well, to understand their requirements, and then we can kind of work it from there. Oh, quite a few questions coming in at the moment. Uh, so librarians need to go to the vendors to obtain our holdings information. Largely, yes, we are working with a couple of publishers at the moment, and our hope is that publishers would send um, entitlement information to us for uploading on your behalf. Um, but if there are any publishers who are unwilling to work with us, you uh, as library institutions are perfectly entitled to go to publishers and ask for your, your entitlement information. Um, which they should be able to provide as a spreadsheet, which you could then upload stating that it's uh, from a publisher perspective, and then it would it would be visible as that comparative view for you. Does uploaded evidence appear on the title record? At the moment, no, that is something we're looking to improve upon in the future, but at the moment it's, it's essentially you've got the entitlement record and then you have, it's essentially a document store that just keeps keeps that record for you. Uh, are there any plans to integrate any of this with GIST KB Plus? Uh, as many institutions have lists of their subscriptions and holdings there too. That is something we can definitely look, for, uh, look to in the future. Um, as I said earlier, we are looking to work with libraries and make sure this tool works for them. So if that's something that would really work for you and for a number of other libraries, then absolutely we, we could look to add that in later. Uh, is there a view for the publishers? Um, 
we do have a preliminary view for the publishers. Uh, our priority at the moment was sorting it out from a library perspective, just because we had a lot more demand from libraries than we did from publishers. But in in the future, it would be our intention for publishers to have logons as well. In fact, if you look at the the short link demo site, it does uh, have some logins for publishers. And um, so they, they can see it from the reverse. So it, it does exist there. It's just not quite as polished as we'd like it to be. Uh, how does the product handle transfers? So you can see in this view we've got up here just now, we've got transfer details. It basically, it pulls from the ETAS database uh, from what I understand. Uh, and it just gives information on transferring a publisher, receiving publisher and the date that it transferred across. Uh, can you attach a link evidence document to a particular title? I think we covered that one already. Uh, what is the source for the title list and what methods are there for updating it? Uh, okay, so uh, the source for the title list is are the spreadsheets that you upload um, through, through the um, upload new entitlements screen here. Uh, so any, anything you upload there will pull through into this, this title screen here. Uh, what are the formatting requirements to upload spreadsheets, i.e. what fields, headers, etc.? At the moment, um, we are fairly restricted uh, in what headers we're looking for. Um, like I said, though, we're happy to work with libraries to, to work out what works best for you. At the moment, we've got ISSN, additional ISSN, although these will be changing soon to print ISSN and EISSN. Uh, we've got title, publisher, Perpetual access start date and end date, volumes, name of license and invoice number. If there are any that would be more helpful for you, we're happy to, to make changes there. Um, and in the future, we've already done some uh, cross mapping um, research where in the future, we're hopeful that the system will be able to recognize a number of different headings as say title uh, so that it'll be a lot more uh, a, a lot more flexible for library users. Are there plans for integration into third party products like ERMSs? There are often title discrepancies between different knowledge bases, so having this integrated into a single KB rather than working in multiple KBs would be helpful. Um, like I said earlier about just KB Plus, if there are ones in particular uh, that you're most interested in, uh, we, we will. We will Make, make as much of an effort as we can uh, to bring in integration there. Um, but yes, it is our intention to, to integrate. We just don't have that functionality at the moment. Uh, this is really cool. Very exciting development in the serials world. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's lovely to have some nice feedback as well. Uh, I hate to ask this already, but any ideas on cost to libraries? Um, at the moment, uh, we we need to do some more research on our end to figure out the cost. Uh, while we're doing beta, however, of course, this this wouldn't incur a cost. So I highly encourage you to to come along and uh, come along to the beta and give it a try and just let us know how you feel. If a transition is declared through the ETS, could the entitlement information appear in the views for each of the publishers involved? Apologies if that is something that would be a way off while the publisher view is being worked on. Um, I think I think entitlement information does appear uh, for each of the publishers involved. I think there was a just trying to remember because I, I did look at this fairly recently. Um, I think it appears, but when it's no longer theirs disappears so from their from their perspective they can see that a transfer took place but they don't have any information on what came before or after well what came before or after depending on who they are of course and um, that is something we would be looking looking to fix you know once we have more publisher engagement at the moment we really were focusing on library engagement so thank you for that uh, influx of, of questions there um, does anyone have any other questions? I mean, feel free to come off mute and, and verbally ask questions as well. Uh, 
Uh, how are title changes handled? Um, at the moment, I'm trying to think how it happens at the moment. I'd need I'd need to check with uh, with our engineers on that one, uh, but I will take a note of that one once we finish here, and I'll, I'll I'm going to be putting together a little FAQs and a little FAQ because um, uh, unfortunately I missed some of the questions that came through on the chat on the earlier session, so I'll I'll get back to you on that one. Another field that may be helpful would be platform, thinking of publisher titles that were on Ingenta that went to publisher sites. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, have a look into that and see if we can add that. Thanks very much. Uh, sorry, no microphone. Will there potentially be more or other flags? Absolutely, we can we can add more flags. These are the ones that we identified at the moment as being uh, a requirement, but if there are more flags that you would like to have, please let me know. Uh, just to confirm, if you have any questions uh, or would like to take part in the beta, uh, just drop us an email at edina at ed.ac.uk. OK, uh, well, thank you very much, everyone, for your time uh, today. I was going to say this afternoon, but it's not afternoon for everyone, <laughs> depending on where you dialed in from. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to bring this session to a close just now. But thank you very, very much uh, for coming along. And please let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>